Welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. This video is a continuation of our series on landscapes. In last week's video, we talked about some of the basic fundamentals that you need to know in order to create landscapes. We talked about overlapping, we talked about shadows, we talked about distance, creating distance by using what's called perspective, where things are bigger when they're close to us and smaller when they're farther away. And in this video, we're going to kind of put a lot of those ideas to the side for a minute and talk about a phenomenon that happens when light is shining from different directions. We're going to talk about something called a silhouette. Now the video you're about to see is something I recorded a while back and I used crayons and watercolor paints to make it. If you don't have crayons and watercolor paints, another option would be to use a black crayon and markers or a black sharpie and colored markers. There's a lot of different ways you can make it happen, but the idea is to have super dark black and bright colors. So right there on your screen you see a word, a big word that says silhouette, silhouette, sun sets, silhouette. Say that word with me, silhouette. That's going to be an important word for us today. We've got three goals today. Number one, we need to know what color the sky is. It's not what you think. Number two, we need to know what happens when light shines from behind something. And number three, we need to know what a landscape looks like at sunset. So the first question, it sounds like an easy question to answer. What color is the sky? Of course it's blue, right? Except when it's not, right? Or when it's not, right? Or when it's not. The sky could be blue sometimes, like during the day, but other times it's like red, orange, yellow. And then other times it's like gray or black. And then other times it's black with little speckles of light shining. So the answer to that question of what color is the sky is the same as the question of what color is water. What color is the sky? Uh, the sky, what's it made of? It's made of air, right? What color is air? Well, there is air between that camera and my face. <sighs> right? I can breathe it, right? And that air doesn't have any color. It's clear. The same is true for the air up in the sky. Why does it look blue? Why does it look red or orange or yellow or purple or black or gray? Well, it all depends on which direction the light's coming from. And it all depends on how many particles of stuff are floating in the air. Depends on a lot of things. This ain't a science class, so we're not going to go into all of the actual specific physical phenomenon that happen with light, because that, that's kind of more advanced science right there. But it is important to know that the sky is not blue, just like water is not blue. We always like, when we color a picture with water in it, like we use blue for raindrops and stuff, but water, this is water right here. It, it's not blue, it's clear, right? It's the same thing. So that whole discussion is all about which direction the light is coming from and, and how it goes through the atmosphere and how the light bends around. That's what causes the color changes. And that's also what we need to discuss when we're talking about a silhouette. A silhouette is what happens when the light shines from behind something. Notice that the, the girl in this picture is like her whole body and her dress and her hair look black. 
you can see little bits of light shining through the edges of the fabric and the edges of her hair. But for the most part, it's just a black, empty shadow where she is. And that's the same thing we see when the sun sets behind a landscape. So here's a picture of a landscape with a bright pink and purple sky. That means it's a sunset. And the sun is really low, peaking just barely above the tops of the trees. And what color are the trees? They're black. It's a shadow. It's a silhouette. Again, here's another picture of somebody sitting on a swing, hanging from a tree. There's birds flying in the sky. All of these things are backlit. The sun is setting down below the horizon, and the whole landscape, including all that fence and the tree and everything, is all black. Here's another example where you see an up-close picture showing individual blades of grass and little plants. And the they're all black and the sky behind it is very brightly lit with sunset colors. So those were all photographs. Let's look at a painting now. Here's a painting that has a bright sunset sky and a scraggly black tree. Here's another painting that has a beautiful sunset sky, one tree, a fence, and a horse. That's going to be our assignment for today. You might have looked at those pictures and thought, what? How am I supposed to? I'm about to show you, right? I'm about to show you how we paint that. So here are the materials we're going to need for today. For starters, we're going to need crayons. Specifically, we're going to need our black crayon. We're going to need some watercolor paints, a cup of water, paper towel to dry things off with, and some kind of paper. Now again, I'm opening up my uh, you know, workbook here, my sketchbook here, and I'm just going to flip to a clean page. And notice I'm turning my paper sideways. If I was drawing something tall, like uh, you know, a skyscraper or something, I would do it vertical. But I want a horizontal page or sideways page because I'm doing a landscape here. And before I use the paints at all, I need to draw my landscape. And to do that, I'm going to use just my black crayon. Do I want to color my trees green? No, because it's a silhouette. I'm not seeing the green. Do I want to color my flowers yellow? No, because it's a silhouette. Everything's going to look black. Do I want to color my hippopotamus gray? No, because it's a, that's right, a silhouette. Everything's going to look black. So what I'm going to start with is a horizon line. Now, I don't want the horizon to be right across the middle. I want it to be down low because I want most of this picture to be filled up with a beautiful sunset sky. So I'm going to start off down low with a horizon. Notice that line goes all the way across my paper, side to side. And then I'm going to start drawing things that come up above the horizon. Now, maybe I want to have something that's sort of farm-like. You saw one of those pictures had like a fence. I could draw fence posts. And then those fence posts would be connected with fence rails that go across. Notice how I'm pushing down super hard. I want a nice thick black there. I don't want this. I want this. See the difference? Pushing down. Okay, maybe that fence uh, comes up to a tree. Maybe there's a tree. Uh, so I'm gonna put that tree Remember we talked about geometric versus organic. The, uh, the fence is geometric. It's basically rectangles, right? And then the tree is going to be organic. It's going to be bumpy, wonky, weird. It's not going to be straight lines, is it? Notice how I've got branches coming off here. 
and I'm going to color in the whole tree super dark black. And now that I've colored in that tree black, I've got to decide if it's a winter picture, I'm done with my tree, right? If it's winter, then there's not going to be any leaves on that tree. If it's any other season, then I'm going to have to think about putting leaves on this tree. Now, when I do that, if I'm going to put leaves on, I don't want to just like make a big ball and fill it in. I want to be able to see gaps between the leaves. But I'm just going to leave this as like a winter picture. I'm going to keep the fence going on this side. And, you know, think about like how, like if you were actually at a farmhouse, there might be some of those fence posts kind of leaning over. They're not all going to be perfectly straight up, right? And there might be some of those, you know, fence rails that are like broken or hanging down, right? So you don't have to make everything perfect rectangles. And then, you know, maybe this is going to butt up against a house, a farmhouse. And am I going to draw the doors and the windows? No, I'm just going to darken in the whole house completely black. Except, you know what, maybe there's a window with a light shining through the window. So I'll leave a window. I'll leave a window. Maybe two windows. Maybe I'll put the lines in the windows. And then those windows are going to be shining yellow with a light inside the house. And then maybe over here, there's going to be an evergreen tree. You know, like a Christmas tree. Again, I'm filling the whole thing in black. And then maybe I want to finish off with a little bit more fencing over here. Uh, or maybe just another tree or a bush. Let's do another, like a bush or something. Let's do some bushes. <sighs> and if I want, I can do some birds in the sky. And now, what about this whole area down here, underneath the horizon? I don't need to color in the space between the bars of my uh, fence, but underneath the fence, the horizon down, I do need to color that in. And it needs to be black, dark black. I need to be pushing down from that line all the way to the bottom. And this is probably going to, you know, I'm going to use up a quite a bit of my crayon here doing this. I don't want to use a marker or a colored pencil or anything like that uh, because we're going to be using our watercolors on top of this. And crayons are made out of wax, which is water resistant. Your paints won't move the crayon around. If I use a marker for this, then it's going to smear all over the place when I paint. Uh, when I paint the sky. So I want to start with a crayon and get all of this done, this landscape done, with a crayon, with a black crayon, not any other colors, just black. And I want the whole bottom part underneath the horizon to be completely black. I want to push it hard so I get a really dark black. And then when I paint the sky, with bright, warm sunset colors. It's going to, number one, have a lot of contrast. And number two, it'll look like a sunset. And number three, it's also not going to mix with the crayon. It's going to leave the crayon right where it is. All righty, now that I am done with my crayon, I'm ready to paint. Now, there are some little... You see on my hand here, there are some little flecks of black. I do want to wipe those off of my paper first so they don't get moved around by the uh, paint. But once I've done that, I'm ready to start painting. Now when I paint, 
remember, we're, we're going to paint the whole sky. What color is the sky? Should I grab the blue and start painting the sky? No. The sky is not blue. This is not a daytime picture. Should I grab the black and start painting it black? No. It's not a nighttime picture with stars in the sky. Should I grab the green and start painting it green? I don't think I've ever seen a green sky. No, the colors we're going to use are bright sunset colors. Check out this picture to, as a reminder, and you see that it's reds, oranges, and yellows. Maybe some pink and purple, right? So what I want to do is use the reds, oranges, and yellows, maybe some purple in there. But what if this is my first time using watercolors and I don't know how to use watercolors? How do I use watercolors? Well, super simple. If you know what they're called, you know how to use them. They are called watercolor paints. So my brush is going to go in the water, then in the color, and then paint. Here's what that means. Water, color, paint. Again, when my brush gets dry, these aren't called dry color paints. They're called water color paints. So if you know what they're called, you know how to use them. When my brush gets dry, should I come up to the color? No, they're not color paints. They're watercolor paints. So I need to go to the water, then grab a color, and then paint. Notice how the color does not stick on top of the black crayon, or it wouldn't stick on top of any crayon, really. Uh, but we're used, we used black crayon for this, and uh, it's not sticking on top of the crayon, is it? It just rolls right off. It does stick to the white paper, but it does not stick to the crayon. And that's why we used the crayon first, because if we tried to paint first and then use the crayon, well, the paper would be soggy wet and we'd rip it with our crayon. So what, what we're doing here is we are using our bright, hot, warm sunset colors. Notice that I'm always moving my brush side to side, never up and down. Even at the edge, like right over here, I'm going to move my brush sideways, not up and down, sideways. Because if you go back and look at a picture of a sunset, the slashes of color in the sky in a sunset go sideways. And remember, we're trying to make a sunset picture, so we're going we're gonna to do that. Notice also that as I paint between these trees or between these um, you know, fence posts, the paint fills in those gaps between them with a bright color. And I can also do that for my windows. I can paint those windows. Now, I think I had too much paint on my brush when I did that. I can pick some of that up and move it around a little. That's one of the nice things about watercolor paints. They are quite forgiving, and it is easy to move them around a little bit. Once you've put them down, you can just dry off your brush on a paper towel and then pick some of that up and then move it somewhere else and then dry off your brush on a paper towel, pick some of that up, and move it somewhere else. Watercolors are nice that way. Anyway, there, I'm pretty much done. Before you put your brush away, you wanna wash it by tapping gently on the bottom of the cup. You wanna dry it on the paper towel, and then put it in the tray. When you close your tray, be careful because these other colors right here, you know, they've got water in them. They are wet paint and that will splash around and dribble and drip. So we just want to close it gently and leave this flat. We don't want to pick it up and like turn it upside down or something. We want to leave this flat. I hope that you enjoyed creating a silhouette sunset with me today. In next week's video, we're going to be talking about the ocean. We're going to be creating something we call a seascape. We're going to be making the beach. Can't wait to see you then.